Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back into Chicanic. Up, everybody's having a great week. Yes, it is Saturday, and yes, Ron and I are working. Even though we're at home, we brought home three different riders so we can knock them out because we're so slammed at the shop right now. I think we've got about 50 riders in. And we're about a month out on repairs and people still drop them off. So <laughs> we're trying to knock a few out this weekend. The three that we brought home are all ones that won't start. The first one we've already went through and it was one that a customer had already put a starter, a brand new ignition switch and all of the safety switches on and it still wouldn't start. And Ron went through the entire wiring harness until he found out that some battery acid had dripped down and ruined some wires rewired that section and it's good to go. So we're on the second one now and I thought I'd go ahead and make a video on it because it's something that is extremely common that could be the reason that your mower's not starting. So let's get into it. So I've got my customer's 2013 um, John Deere D110 and she has had it sitting in her garage for a few years without it running. She wants to give it to a family member. So we're gonna go over it now, see why it won't start. It's probably definitely something with the carburetor just looking over it um it looks like it's actually was serviced before she let it sit because the oil filter still looks brand new like doesn't have any dust other than what's been settling on it as it sits so one thing i did notice though is there's a bunch of oily residue underneath this valve cover and these are really prone to leaking and if you see a lot of smoke sometimes it could just be that valve cover leaking straight down onto your muffler and we're gonna go ahead and replace that but first we are going to get it running and i've got a good idea it's got a neaky carburetor on this briggs and stratton that it is probably this fuel shut off solenoid right here so that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to check that and see if that's the issue. Maybe it's sticking, show you how to get it unstuck, and we'll know a lot more once we release it from the bowl and see what comes out of it. All right, so I've unplugged the fuel shutoff solenoid wire right here. I'm just going to take that out of the way, and I want it to show you what comes out of the bowl. So I'm just going to put some paper towels under here to hopefully catch anything. And I'm going to use my half inch open end ended wrench and I'm going, whenever I go at it, you're looking at it upside down. So it's lefty loosey, righty tighty if you're going this way. So we're gonna to wanna to go this way with it. And it should start pouring out here. So everything that's in the bowl and the bottom end of that fuel line past the fuel pump's gonna probably pour out of here in just a second. I might wanna move my foot. and well it's not stuck up it's stuck down so we did see some rust come out of there which is not good we're gonna have to take the carburetor off so if you're to this point and you pull your fuel shut off solenoid out and it is up and it will not be pushed down like this should be plunge, like an easy plunge just pushing it up and down this one is actually stuck in the engaged position like when you would actually have power to it so a lot of times when you open it up after it sat for a while it's stuck up and it'll be rusty inside you'll have to clean it out and get it plunging again because when it's stuck up it won't let any gas come through this one being stuck down, you know, I was hoping this would be an easy fix, but unfortunately that means that the jet inside the carburetor is clogged up. So I've got to go further. Okay. So I know this looks tasky and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't do this, but if I can do it, you can do it. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my uh, quarter drive and release. There's a tiny little screw up here. You could also use a flat head to release it out of the air filter base. And I have removed the air filter. And I've got two uh, 3 8 bolts right here that we're going to release our manifold with. Before I take that last one out, I'm going to go ahead and remove my fuel line and my vent line. Now be real careful when you move the vent line off of this tube coming up to your air filter because you can break that thing off. So I don't even know if I need the pliers for that. Now we're just going to pull that off with our hand. This one we're going to need to remove the clip. Bring it back. Come on. There we go. And we're going to 
gonna take this bolt out. And once we're here, we're gonna slide it down through the air filter base. Come down with this. And we're gonna go this way to remove the choke. Just like that. And then this one, get this cable out of the way. We're just going to turn the carburetor this way and take them out the top. Just like that. Oop, almost stretched out my spring. Got a little spring along with that lever, so make sure you don't wanker it out. All right, now we got everything off. I wish I had smell vision today because this thing smells ripe. All right, we have two bolts holding on the bolt of this sneaky carburetor. I'm gonna remove those. Let's see what's inside here. Well, actually, it doesn't look bad at all. Check it out. Oh, if I can show you in the light really well, everything really looks good inside. Hmm. That's impressive for sitting for years. So we're gonna hope that we can do this one really simple. I'm gonna break out my welding tip cleaners here and the jet is right here at the tip. A lot of times when people take this apart, this jet will just fall out on them and they won't even know that it was in there. But that is the culprit because I can see right now it is completely clogged up. So I am going to clean it up and free up that fuel shutoff solenoid, clean this bowl out, put it back together, and let's see if it works. Oops. Let's give this thing a little spray action. Clean this bowl out here. And clean the bowl really good and really fast. Wire brush. Oh yeah. Let me show you. As you can see, all that stuff came out there. I'm going to rinse it out really good with carburetor cleaner to make sure there's no metal flake in there and we should be good to go. And now you see it's all beautiful again. All the yellow is gone. Next up, I got to free this solenoid up. So, so I'm hoping that the cap doesn't come off as I twist it around here because it is pressed on. But if it does, we could push it back on. But we're going to just work it and keep pulling it slowly until we get it to release all that rust that's built up in there. And yeah, it's coming out now. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh, it's still like that, but we're gonna have to clean that out because see, it's, it's not wanting to return like it should. It should be a little faster than that. So let's uh, get some cleaner in there because yeah, I can see a bunch of rust down there. All right, now that we got that freed up, we're gonna give it a little spray action in there. Oh, I'm out of spray. Come on, there we go. And now, see all that nasty stuff come out? I'm gonna spray it again. One more time. Oh, need some more spray. Oh yeah, there we go. Check it out. Awesome. All right, so I've got it all put back together. I am going to put it on just like I took it off. All right, now for the money shot. Let's see if she starts.
Don't know if you noticed the smoke when it started, but as you can see, yeah, this thing is leaking like a sieve. So it doesn't come with a gasket on a lot of them, but there is a replacement gasket for it. So I am definitely going to clean this up and put a gasket on it. So thank goodness that was a simple one. If you have to go in deeper to your carburetor and change out your gaskets, a lot of times on those Nikes, they have O-rings in them that will go bad. If it's flooding through constantly, you've got to go deeper. I've already made a complete video on that with a super cool trick to save you a ton of money if you want to keep your OEM carburetor because that carburetor replacement is about $130 if you get the OEM one. Do not, I repeat, do not buy an aftermarket Niki carburetor off eBay or Amazon. Probably 70% of the time they will not work. I don't know what they did. Like we used to actually use them and then a few years ago, the quality of them just declined rapidly and 70% of them do not work. So you will end up having to change it out frequently and it's just not worth it in the long run. Either buy another OEM carburetor or check out my video. I'm going to leave a link right above where I totally broke it down. I did all the gaskets and everything and showed you how to get a kit for like $18 instead of the Briggs one for, you know, $50. So check that out if you need to go deeper. Thanks again for tuning into Chicanic. Hopefully this video saved you time, money, and frustration in the future. If you haven't found me on Facebook, find me at facebook.com slash Chicanic. Find me at Instagram at TheRealChicanic or find me at Chicanic.com where you get your own t-shirts, hoodies, and long sleeve shirts. Thanks guys and have a great weekend.